and welcome to the Waterloo City Council work session. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozen? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Oh, there we are. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Foyce? Here. Mr. Greider? Here. And Mrs. Jewin? Here. Motion for the agenda and minutes, please. Motion to approve the agenda as proposed and the approval of the minutes of July 19th, 2021 work session as proposed. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Who said, who said aye? Somebody, Jonathan or somebody? Pat. Jonathan. You're opposed? opposed? No. No, they said. He was just delaying. Yeah, okay, delay. Yeah. Okay. All right, motion carries. Um, first on the agenda is discussion of Waterloo Housing Authority and neighborhood services oh. operations. So we have about 40 minutes for both of you. So divide equally. <laughs> and Felicia, you're going first? Yes. Please introduce yourself and then give us your presentation. Good afternoon, you all. I am Felicia smith Niles. I am the neighborhood services co co coordinator here. I'm actually looking to add community engage, engagement to that um, job title because we've expanded over this this last five years that I've been here. That time went really fast. <laughs> um, but ju just how this office is is used has has changed a bit. We've got a presentation. So the first um, slide it is just t t talking about what our goal. Go goals are and our real deal is to get people engaged engaged in each other and engaged with us as the city sometimes when you work here there are things that you know that you just assume everybody else knows and it's you would be shocked <laughs> to find out some of the things that residents don't know or even how to na navigate city offices and city services. Because even working here, at times, I'll think an office does that and be like, oh, it's, it's not streets, it's actually this, or it's actually waste management and not sanitation. And, 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 and I've come to, to the rule that when in qu question, don't, default to San Sandy Greco because she ha handles so many random things that I'll call her usually after I call Michelle. So I, I, I really try to serve as a, a resource for everyone. We presently have 31 recognized neighborhood associations now recognize means at some point they came be before you 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 all to be heard now recognized and active are two completely different things we have 13 that are active no we have 16 that are active two that are new that aren't on here right now we have King Bard Hill which is going to be coming before council next month they are um, by it's behind Church Row by uh, Campbell Street kind of uh, the Kingsley side kind of and we have a new new one being formed now by Southdale kind of out by by Summerland, and then we we have three that I'm bringing back on board, and when I use that term, it means within the last three th th three years they've had a leader pass away, or just sit back. So they're an active group, and I still have ties with them, but they don't have an actual lead, and and so there are th groups that aren't officially active. But I still still speak to to re res residents that want stuff done. Now, the pandemic. <laughs> I thought this was going to kill us. I really did. 
but it strengthened neighborhood groups so much. They actually sought out ways to ch check, check on each other, um, new, new ways to tie in. We did a na neighborhood scavenger hunt for, for kids. And so I drove the neighborhoods and made a bingo game card where it was like a house with a red door, a dog, a white fence. And so you, you could, could walk through your hood with your kids and do something to stay outside, stay active. We drew uh, activity maps on sidewalks. And so we, we would do chalk and we'd do uh, squiggly lines and then hop six times and stand here and do 10 jumping jacks. And it was great just seeing kids outside doing stuff. And we loved, loved that. Zoom meetings worked better. Like they worked better for this type of work. Parents that are have kids running and meals to make, it was easier for them to hop online than it was to stop everything and come and meet. So I feel like the pan pandemic lended its way for people to know that they needed each other. And so I I feel like I'm one of the few areas where it actually helped us. <laughs> now, one of the big things that neighborhood ser ser services does is help with the na neighborhood cleanups. But this has kind of changed. This is really hubbed out of the sanitation department with L L L Alice. All that I do is co co copy their flyers and help them get them out. But Ella pl plans this, and this comes out of the sanitation bu budget. It feels like it's ours, but it's really not. But these neighborhoods, this is their cleanup schedule for, for this year. Um, it's COVID as well. Steve Carnigan from uh, Gallagher Blue, 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 Blue Dorn called me and said, we, we want to do something cool. We want to work with Waterloo. Let's talk. And so we had talked about these outdoor concert series things. And the first thing that I had said is, I want to be the point person because the idea of everyone calling every city office independently to make each of these happen made me want to throw up. And so I, <laughs> I said, here, let's talk. You guys pick all of the sites. I will get the, we, we did a jo joint city staff call to say, okay, here's what's happening. Here are the dates. Here is what's necessary. Let's all get on the same page because I wanted to make sure with an e event that, that that was high publicity, that was going to be a, a great look for Waterloo, that it went smoothly. And we ended up with these shows. Kevin Burt just, just played that uh, orange show and it was great. Um, we are looking forward to the fall shows. Gallagher does all of the promo for, for it and pro provides a door hanger and has let na neighborhoods print stuff on the back if they want to. So I thought that that was really cool too. But it's a great show. They take care of the artists and sound and what's been great too is neighborhoods took it upon themselves to make it something so they called food trucks and had art stuff and face painting and they took that chance to to say we're out here and we're back and 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 make these great neighborhood eve events tomorrow night is National Night Out. It's called How Many Hot Dogs Can You Eat in Three Hours? So 
we the the these are all of the sites and locations last um last <clears throat> not last year year before last we did a bus and i thought we don't have that many back up the the bus will be back next year when everyone's super good and we're all covid clear we're going to get on that fun bus and and hop around like cra crazy people cuz that was wonderful going to um 12 neighborhoods in 3 hours was a feat each year but it meant so much for neighborhoods to see you all and i think it was excellent for department heads to get out and see the neighborhoods that they are working in and what they they do in those and so i love national night out this year Southdale's first will be on Saturday just based on their na neighborhood they felt <coughs> that that would be the best day for them and they want you all to stop out too so please take advantage of that okay now I'm getting excited because this I think is so cool because I talked about it and I made it happen so <laughs> I went to a national conference and I saw this party in a box and I thought it was so 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 cool because a, a lot of people don't gather because of resources and so I wrote a grant to Black Hawk County G G Gaming and then I called um, the, the G GM and we got 11,500 bucks to buy the trailer fill it with cool stuff and maintain it and still buy neighborhood stuff. And so it's been a wonderful thing. We unveiled this at the My Waterloo Days Parade this this year. Um, it, it, it's, it's going to be at the Southdale event on the 7th. And so I'm super excited about it. One of our um, community development guys, John Martin, he did all of that construction on the inside and built my, sh my sh shelves and all of that. Super excited uh, about this because neighborhoods are excited and it generated phone calls. And my biggest piece is getting people to interact with us when it's not a negative thing because we all know that we get those calls when something's wrong, quick. It's really cool when folks are excited and saying, how can I get that? And it was free, like it didn't cost any money from us. And I thought it was super great. And we're still gonna push for getting more stuff in that. Um, VGM also did an amazing job on the wrap design. And I thought it was wonderful, and I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited about that. This is pretty cool, too. So the Waterloo Career Center has a construction class. And they called and said, we have these sheds. What can, can we do? So last year, they gave me seven. They gave me, no, they gave me six last year. And I offered them to neighborhoods to, to raffle. The winner, we brought it there. Car Cardinal, par par part of their class, Cardinal brought them to each site and the kids leveled them. And so these kids got to see their work and we chose a, a nonprofit org that does lawn care for elderly people. They got got one too. So this year, the group that's getting, the group that that's gonna get one is the We uh, Rose gar 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 Garden Co-op. They're gonna get one on uh, their garden site for all of their <coughs> gardening tools and stuff. And so it's been really cool to provide these. And they're gorgeous. Like I have a lot with with me in, in, in them, but I thought that that would have been weird, but it shows scale. They're huge, like they're good size um, sheds. 
and for folks to get something free of use from us is, is another relationship builder. Mm. Qu quarterly, I gather all of our neighborhood leads for a four hour workshop. In each of these, <coughs> we have a different s s city department speak. And the interesting thing about these is what people want to know. I assumed at first that they would want to hear from Noel and our police chief and our fire chief. Todd Deerfield stopped a whole me meeting when he talked about the trees and the tr treatment to save the trees. They talked about that for a long time and um, our san 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 sanitation rep brought up the, the red stickers. People didn't know about those. And our meeting, nobody wanted to talk about crime, anything. They were like, wait a minute. There's red stickers that you, you can put on a trash bag and the 10 for, for 10, that question and answer portion lasted way longer than I thought because pe people were like, I can put a living room set out for 10 bucks and you'll come and get it. Like 10 items, you mean I can put, people didn't know. And so that meeting is always so good for just city workers to talk. We had an amazing pre presentation from um, engineering, and they came and talked about water in your yard with rain barrels and how to make sure all of that stuff is working. People were so thankful. And it was so cool that just in this brief time, people felt, oh, I get it. And that is great. And they shared that. They asked for that PowerPoint. They wanted that back. And so I've learned, too, that I'll, I'll call, call on folks just to kind of explain what stuff is. And it's great seeing pe people going, I'm going to share that, because I didn't know that. From the, there, I also do fun facts where I'll print every now and then how many manhole covers there are or how many square miles of con concrete there are, just to pr provide scale, because it's easy to say, well, I saw a pothole on blah, blah, blah street. You know how many miles of concrete there are here, of just asphalt and concrete? Like, do you know what goes in to running this city? And a lot of people don't. And so I try, try to, to use these me me meetings as time to, at, educate and also for them to support each uh, uh, other because this is a zero paid job for them and they end up dealing with a lot. Like I've had some neighborhood leaders go through it, like go through it with threats and people mad about certain things and they wanted this and you didn't speak on that. And so these every th three, three months is a group of like-minded people that love Waterloo. They love Waterloo because they give of themselves and give their time. And so I'm always lo looking for, for ways to support them. Now, part of my role, I, I spend a lot of time representing Waterloo spots, and I feel that even when it's a stretch, it's still a Waterloo voice on teams and on boards. I do a lot of work with Cedar Falls. Um, they have, they want a na na neighborhood model like ours because they have a, a bigger areas that are huge and May, 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 Mayor Green reached out to me when he was running for city council years ago and said, we like this smaller look where you can actually knock on doors and see people and have smaller group things. So I, I worked with him on that and I also was um, named to their Cedar Falls racial 
Equity Task Force, which has been an interesting role to just even seeing how another city deals and how they get info out. And so being a, a, a voice on that has been great. I sit on a team called One Cedar Valley, where it's uh, both city m m mayors, um, the <coughs> university presidents, and the college pr pr president, um, ch ch cham ch chamber, ch chamber people. It's not the chamber anymore. Grow, grow Cedar Valley. <laughs> um, but we're looking at ba barriers to employment and how we can help people O overcome those and one of the key pieces that we've we've said is getting the network to work we we have a lot of orgs doing their own things and trying to find something that can be a one stop <laughs> assessment that can really get people true help not just a job but how are you going to get to that job Who's going to watch your kids? All of that, where we deal with that from a top-down level. So I'm kind of excited to to see what what that's going to look like. Felicia, I, a, yeah. I, I could listen to you all day, and I love the neighborhood services. But we want it. Julie wants oh, am, a little bit time? of time. No, I'm, Are you? Can you wrap it up in yes. just a couple minutes? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, our filling the need situation is just, I'm looking to get funding that there's only one foundation right now that gives funding, and that is the um, Community fo Foundation. So I'm soliciting Otto Schweitz and the, the other groups to designate a side fund for na neighborhood activities. I'm doing work with home cooks to get them certified because oh, oh, over, oh, over COVID, we, we had a lot of people make, making a lot of food at home that, that were great things, but we, we, we're working with the de Department of Health to fix that. And the par par partnership with the gar gardeners, since we have a group that will till your lot for free. We're trying to make sure that all of the city gardens are kept and ma maintained and ho ho hooking them up with that group. But, but our put push is still leadership in neighborhoods and pushing through that and trying to find funding for it. And these are our new banners that we just got today for tomorrow, so I'm super excited about those. Leave well. them there, because those are really cool. Those are cool. Go ahead. You do so much connecting so many, I thank you. Um, unless someone's got a burning question, can council members just call you or text you or email you with any questions they Absolutely. might have? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank Anytime. you. You guys know me. Thank you for all you do, Felicia. I've been engaged in a couple of your meetings, and they're awesome and very dynamic, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Julie, you have got 12, 13 minutes. <laughs> Can you do it in 13 minutes? Probably. Okay. I'll do my best, but I need to put this down because Felicia's tall and I'm short. <laughs> so. All right, hopefully that's good. We'll see. I'm not good at technology, so we'll see if this works. But you got Chris uh -huh. right there I next went to too you. Far. There we go. All right, so what I thought I'd do is just kind of give you an update as to a lot of the ways we have changed the way that we do business due to COVID, probably as, as everybody else has. Um, but a lot of these things we are going to continue to do because we found that there, they've been time savers, they've been um, helpful for both staff as well as our um, clients, um, our participants and our landlords. Um, simple things like most of our appointments we're doing by phone now rather than in person. And we have a very small lobby, so now our lobby's not congested all the time, which is nice. And we knew it needed to be that way because we needed to social distance. So 
it's, it's really helped. Um, we also, with Chris's help, um, updated our answering system. Oftentimes in our office, I don't know how many of you have been in there, but the phone rings off the hook. We have three or four lines ringing at one time, pretty much all the time. And we can only pick up three, and we can't do anything about the others. So at that point, it's really helpful to have a system. Um, and we set it up so that now they can actually select the particular housing coordinator, director, the person in charge of the waiting list, so that that way they don't have to go to a separate voicemail and be forwarded and all of that. So that's been a big help as well. Um, so we've done all of that. Um, we managed to maintain a high quality of service to our participants throughout. Um, we have continued to do all of, of the normal work of our office, um, especially important during the pandemic when so many people lost employment to get those income changes done quickly so that their rents wouldn't have to be too high when they were no longer employed, those sorts of things. Um, and most of the other housing authorities in our area, I know Cedar Falls, Evansdale, they were completely work from home for a whole bunch of months. As opposed to us, we had people in and out. We had nobody working from home full time. We had some folks who would be out like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and alternate with another Tuesday, Thursday to keep our office not as full. But we managed to stay open the entire time as did other city departments. Um, the biggest thing for us that came with um, <clears throat> COVID was the CARES Act funding that we received last year. Um, we received a total of almost $340,000 in additional administrative fees um, from uh, the Department of Housing. And we used that initially um, to make some improvements like the, the permanent um, glass that we put around our reception area. Um, we've used it to purchase, obviously, masks and, and uh, hand sanitizer and extra disinfectant and, and all those sorts of things. Um, additionally, with the work from home, we purchased laptops um, and printers so that our staff could work from home because um, we did not have that availability previously. And then looking toward the future, the biggest expense I think that we're going to be um, using a lot of this money for is all of the new modules and software um, that we actually were in the process of of integrating into our systems right now. We started out with something called Assistance Connect, which is portals for our applicants, our landlords, and our tenants to be able to do different things. For example, our landlords can now go in and see the payments we've made to them, whereas we would spend four to five hours sending those reports and emailing them to landlords. So a big time savings for us and much easier for them. So those sorts of things. Tenants can also like report income changes without even having to talk to their housing coordinator on the phone. They can do it through this Assistance Connect. So it's really neat. And we're just getting going with that. We, we did one segment per month. We started with the owners in April. We did the applicants or the waiting list in May. And then we started with the tenants in June. So we're still in that process. Um, also, uh, we began taking online applications for the first time on June 15th. So we have totally changed the way we take applications for our program. Um, previously, we only took applications on Thursdays, and between 8 and 4, you had to come in in person. You had to do all of that. During COVID, we made it also th so that it had to be by appointment only because we had to limit the number of people in the office at one time. Obviously pretty restrictive for folks. We did make exceptions if someone needed a reasonable accommodation because they could not come into the office, we would mail those. But generally, we made everyone come in. So since we have changed the way that we do things, not only do we accept the online applications, but if someone comes into the office and requests one, we give it to them. We let them take it with them, fill it out, bring it back, and when they come back, we can make copies of their IDs, social security cards, the things that we need. And through the online waiting list application, folks can actually take a picture of their ID or social security card and upload it with it. <clears throat> So it works, it works really slick. And we've taken, since June 15th, we've taken somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 applications 
online. So, and a lot of them, it also makes it easier. A lot of times, you know, people from out of state want to apply. Obviously, that's pretty restrictive if you have to come in person to do that. So now they are able to do that. Um, we are just right now, pro actually this week, instituting our mobile inspections module um, where our inspector, instead of having to take paper, um, out, uh, paper inspection booklets out and write on them by hand, now has an iPad that has all of the items on it that he can click and then he can, you know, push the speaker button and talk what he wants to write, which is really cool. Um, so we're going to be getting rid of our paper inspection booklets, which will obviously save him time. And then the next part of that, which we're hoping to get done in the next couple of weeks, is the inspection letters that we send to both um, landlords and tenants, depending on whose responsibility, we will be able to automatically take the repairs that are in that system and put them into the letter to be able to send the letters that way. Right now, I remember when I was a housing coordinator, there were days when I would spend two hours typing inspection letters because that's what had to be done and they had to go out. So once again, a big time savings for everyone. And I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So facing the future, I guess I would say it's, it's kind of like Felicia said, COVID was not great, but COVID has, it's kind of pushed us, especially for those of us who have been here over 30 years, a little bit beyond our comfort zone to be able to do things differently that are more technology friendly, more efficient, and I think we will continue to go that way, and I think, I think it's a good thing for, for our programs in general. Um, Ridgeway Towers wise, just a, a wonderful note, throughout all of COVID, we were extremely careful. We had mask requirements, we limited visitors, um, we um, did extra disinfecting two times a day of commonly touched surfaces, we did all of that. And throughout the entire pandemic, out of our 50 residents, we only had three who got COVID, nobody was hospitalized, nobody died, and that's all elderly folks. So I think we did very well there, so we're really pleased by that. Um, in addition to that, uh, we are in the process right now, um, actually I have a meeting next Monday, our, boil our new boilers are in, we're replacing all three boilers, and so we're gonna be getting those installed here very soon, um, as we've had nothing but problems with our old ones for quite a while, and then, we still are the only um, public housing building in the area that provides the um, cable and Wi-Fi to the residents for a reduced charge. We did have a fee increase effective yesterday, up to $35 a month, but any of you that have cable or Wi-Fi know that that's a heck of a deal. And we haven't had, we had one person take their name off of the list because of that fee increase, but otherwise everybody still thinks it's a great deal. So we continue with that. Um, Section eight wise, we've had a big struggle sort of because of COVID and last year what happened is we became way over leased because nobody was going off the program because of COVID. I mean, basically people were not becoming over income. People were not leaving to go to a different location, you know, that kind of thing. There, everything just sort of stopped. So we were supposed to have 1,075 vouchers and for a majority of last year, we were over 1,100, um, which is not good. I mean, we managed okay within the terms of our budget. Um, by the end of the year, but we were not able to issue any new vouchers off of our waiting list after January of 2020 because of that, the entire rest of the year. We couldn't issue any more because we were overleased. Then this year, now we're <coughs> running into the opposite problem. So we started briefing again in January. We briefed January, March, May, and now actually we're briefing this week um, and last week, end of July, um, 30 a month. And because now our numbers have finally fallen and people can't find places to rent. So we're having a hard time with that. We're having a very low success rate because there's not a lot of availability of rental units out there right now. Um, so I'm hoping this all shakes out eventually. I'm sure it will. We'll continue to brief. We're issuing 50, like I said, this week and we will, we will continue to do what we can. Um, one of the other things that's affected us and I think probably all of you were aware 
Um, one of our staff members passed away unexpectedly in April. Um, not only has that been an emotional roller coaster for all of us in the office, but obviously a, a very overloaded staff. Um, when you figure that they already have over you know, 260 um, participants each, plus the associated landlord, et cetera, and then you add almost another 100 to that, it's been really rough. Good news is we're doing interviews tomorrow, so we're getting close, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Um, even through this crazy year, we actually um, have started two new programs. One is the Foster Youth to Independence Program. Um, we started that back in, well, started it in January. I believe we got our first referrals in February or March. And so far, we, have, we can get up to 25 vouchers, and we have requested nine from HUD, and we have issued four um, vouchers to young people that are aging out of the foster care system, and they're currently looking for units. Um, so we don't have anybody leased yet, but it's, it's getting there. Um, and they can get up to three years of assistance with this program, and then at that time, if they are still eligible income-wise, we will um, give them one of our vouchers so that they can stay on the program. And then most recently, um, we were awarded 15 emergency housing vouchers um, through uh, the American Rescue Plan. And we are just getting going on that. We have our signed memorandum of understanding um, with our local um, coordinated entry group um, and with the um, statewide um, continuum of care. And we will be providing not only rent assistance, um, but also services in terms of deposits, in terms of housing search assistance, and even such things as beds and bus tickets and things like that to hopefully make this program a success. This is the first program of its kind to actually provide service fees along with the rental assistance. So it's really a unique program, and we expect to have our first few referrals on that this week, from what I understand. So now that we've gotten all the required documents signed. So that is um, the end of my presentation. I told you I could do it quickly. Am you I did. good or what? Um, <laughs> anyway, good. but like I said, this the main thing is considering the, the pandemic, I think we have come out on top of that. We are changing the way we do things. We're starting new programs and we're moving forward. So Well, and the funding that you received sounds like you used it wisely to make sure you can be more efficient. That's so, what we're trying to do. I think we all learned something from mm -hmm. the, the, the I think pandemic so. that I think there's so. a lot of things we can do more effectively. Right. So. right. But you're another program when Felicia talks about things that people don't know in the community. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that a lot of people don't know about all the services you provide. So. They don't. They just know Section 8. They don't know everything yeah. else that yeah. it is that we but do. But you do a great job. So. Well, thank you. Thanks for serving so many people. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Mayor, we are ready for... Oh, okay. Um, the next on the agenda is discussion of changes to the shared mobility device ordinance and a presentation from Helbiz, um, who is the new um, scooter provider. Mr. Peterson, you're in charge of this one. Thank you. Um, I'll just summarize the... Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Martin Peterson. I'm from the legal department. Um, <laughs> so I'll summarize what we're proposing today. Um, we're asking the companies to impose a maximum speed limit of 15 miles per hour. Uh, we are asking, requiring that um, riders certify they are age 18 or older and provide a state-issued driver's license or state-issued identification card um, on the mobile app. We um, are changing the language of 387C to read licensees shall have a fleet size of up to 150 units. We are in in 387D, we remove the word or, so now that reads licensees shall maintain a multilingual website, call center, and mobile app customer interface that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We rewrote L um, so that it reads a licensee shall only stage its shared mobility devices in areas approved by the city 
um, there were some um, concerns with how that read previously. And then lastly, we are clarifying 388A so that shared mobility devices shall only be ridden on streets and where available in bike lanes and multi-use multi recreational trails. Thank you. Um, and we are you the, the yeah. new, do you want to push it to the mic? Yeah. You're the, the man, are you the local person? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna... not the local person. Okay. Uh, our city manager is not feeling well, actually, in a couple of uh, days, uh, so he apologized. I am actually... Can you introduce yourself again? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, Gianluca Spriano. Just a second. I'm sorry. Wait. I had a question for Marty. Oh. Before, Can you hold on just this. a second? Not okay. in a rush. Mr. Boson. Uh, well, thank you. And my question with this, on this verification of your 18 years of age with a, a, a state ID or, or a, uh, a driver's license, can a person rent more than one scooter on that ID? Can, At can, the same time? Yes. Mr. Peterson, do you have an answer for that? I think it varies by company, so I can't really speak to that. Okay. 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 Why don't we hold all of I think we're all going to have lots of questions. Right. We'll wait till after your presentation. Yeah, no problem. And I have an answer, so no problem on okay. that. Okay. And your name again? Gianluca Spriano. I'm the director of uh, the International and National uh, Business Development for Helbis. Okay. Well, oh, welcome. Sure. Thank you. And please give us a little overview of your company. Sure. So we prepared a small presentation here. So we are a multimodal company. Uh, we are based uh, uh, as a headquarter in New York City. Uh, we have, uh, uh, well, we can start uh, following the presentation. So we basically, uh, our mission is uh, creating uh, the, the last and first mile uh, uh, connection with uh, electric vehicles. Uh, being a multimodal company is not uh, just a true uh, electric scooters, it's also with uh, e-bikes or e-mopeds. Well, uh, I think all of you received this, uh, this presentation. It's uh, very general, so if you have any question, I'm happy to, uh, to reply. Uh, using our scooter, it's pretty easy. You have to download the, the app. Uh, you have to uh, find the location. So if uh, scooters are available in your city, you can zoom in and find uh, the location where uh, the, the scooters are parked, uh, scanning a QR code, and basically uh, unlock the ride. Uh, we are present uh, right now in uh, more than uh, 10 cities uh, in the United States. Uh, we are expanding. Uh, we will, will be soon in the West Coast uh, in California. And uh, well, our expansion plan touch uh, other cities uh, around the United States, uh, uh, including Hawaii, the state of Hawaii. Uh, we are a market leader in, uh, in Italy. Uh, we, we basically help uh, the, the government of Italy to introduce uh, uh, the legislation for accepting electric uh, scooters uh, uh, in the in the government in the in the in the state in, in the nation. I'm sorry, and uh, we are expanding as well in Europe in uh, other five to six markets in the in the next well arriving to to the end of the of this year 2021. So um, we always commit uh, to have the best technology available. That's what we uh, deployed uh, here in Waterloo. Uh, we are very happy to be here, uh, and uh, we have, uh, um, well, our values, of course, uh, we, we will be fully neutral, CO2 neutral by 2022, uh, and uh, we just partner uh, with uh, some of the best recycling companies in the United States. Uh, well, basically, it's a, it's a, a global uh, partnership for uh, uh, recycling uh, the, the, the batteries. So that's a big step forward because, of course, uh, uh, when the, the battery arrives to the end of uh, his life, we can basically uh, being uh, fully secure in, uh, in the saving, uh, uh, in recycling, of course, the, the battery. Uh, our values and commitments, of course, uh, include uh, uh, our in-house operation. We don't rely on uh, third-party companies. Uh, we have uh, everything in-house. Every market we, we go in, uh, we hire local person uh, from the community. Uh, for example, our, uh, our city manager, Tim Pratt, that is not here today, 
uh, is uh, born and raised here in uh, Waterloo and is doing a great job to try to uh, include uh, everyone and uh, make uh, the Hellbits brand uh, known more more with events. Uh, we we were speaking uh, this afternoon uh, uh, with the city to to uh, create uh, as many events as possible uh, for uh, safety event for having everybody trying the scooters and uh, expressing uh, uh, the the laws and regulation that uh, uh, has been put in place here in the city of Waterloo. And of course, we, we partner and try to partner more and more with local businesses. Uh, so uh, we, we already start speaking uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, shops and restaurants to being able to put the scooters uh, outside, uh, outside to basically give uh, the opportunity to have uh, our service. Uh, in uh, our safety, uh, our values, the safety is one of our main goals. Uh, we created a, a website for uh, the city of Waterloo where we express uh, that uh, only uh, 18 plus uh, rider will use uh, uh, the electric scooter. Uh, if, uh, if not, they can't uh, ride the scooter and they have to um, uh, scan an ID, a valid ID as a uh, as the, the city clerk was saying before. Uh, and uh, the speed limit, we, we put the, as uh, first three rides, uh, uh, the so-called uh, um, uh, beginner mode, beginner mode. So basically you have to, uh, you, you can ride your scooter up to 10 miles per hour for the first three rides. And then the maximum speed will be 15 miles per hour. But everything is available on the website. I'm be, I will be more than happy to share with you the, the page that we create uh, for, for the city. Uh, Help is here in Waterloo. We collaborate with the city. We try as much as we can uh, from day one, before even launching, uh, to coordinate the best parking, uh, the deployment, and uh, the, the operational area. We are aware that there were a little bit of confusion at the beginning of where to put the scooter, uh, how many scooters, and things like that. Everything can be solved pretty easily. We, we are flexible on that. Uh, even mapping with the city and the help of uh, local, uh, um, local organization uh, to where to put the scooters, how many, and dividing, of course, uh, with uh, the other company present, uh, present here in the city. Um, Again, in the presentation uh, is uh, written uh, the name and the contact information of our, uh, or, uh, of our city manager. Uh, our customer service, uh, as requested, uh, but in general, is available 24-7. Also, the, the, also, the customer service is, uh, is available uh, uh, in different languages and is in-house. So every, everyone that uh, speaks uh, on behalf of Helbis are Helbis representative. So that's very helpful. Uh, Rather than that, here are also my contact information. If uh, anyone has a question uh, or moving forward, uh, uh, we really would like to grow up with, uh, with the city. So open uh, to, to everything. And this is uh, just a, a brief. Uh... Do you have the contact information for your new local guy on there? Yes, it's written uh, on there. Actually, I, I don't know if I can Phone go back. Phone number emails on there. It's here. Local point of contact uh, is a Tim Pratt, uh, email address, and phone number. Great. Yeah, Great. and I already share with the city clerk, so it's already in our uh, license permit. Yes, Good. they have uh, everything. Okay. D can you answer Mr. Boson's question? Absolutely. So uh, our technology doesn't allow to have uh, to use uh, um, to basi basically multiple ride uh, give, using one ID using multiple give the access to open other scooters. At yes. the so, same time. At the same time. So it's not, uh, it's not something uh, that our technology allows. So each person that uh, starts a ride has to put uh, uh, his or her own ID, uh, and then he can use just one scooter. Uh, we can also implement the fact that randomly, uh, because, of course, uh, you can create your profile and then just uh, give uh, your access uh, information, contact information to someone else, we can also check randomly uh, to put again the request of putting the ID many other times. So that's something uh, it can be implemented on the IT side. So, sir, you would, if you set up this, you could one ID set your set your uh, your uh, 
your background up and everything on, on your site, but then someone else could use that in, unless you periodically check. Yes, of course. That's okay. uh, that's the, the ratio, yeah. And, and the reason I brought that up is is one night there was a, a, a family, a mother, father, and two small kids riding four, four different scooters. So they they had to they had to charge those scooters somehow. Yep. You know, and, and they and they had to have access to it. And we know that the kids weren't eighteen because they were they were too small to be eighteen years of age. I didn't look to see what what brand they were riding, whether they were riding, you know, the, the, sure. the other brand because it's easy to tell the difference. I mean, if you see the front of it and the color that's on on the scooter. But but how Hellbiz, would they have done that then? Well, I don't know how the other company's doing it. Okay. Well, to be honest, I, I can't speak uh, for the other company, but uh, uh, we, we can't allow that. You couldn't have done that no. on your scooters? No. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, probably uh, mom and dad uh, had uh, their, own, uh, 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 own pro- their own profile if they, if they were riding a Helpis scooter. Mm-hmm. If not, uh, it was not Helpis. Yeah, and that, that, that's, that's good to know. Let's um, focus initially on the questions for Mr. the Helpis rep. And then we'll go back um, to asking any questions in general. So sure. specifically, do you have questions on the helmets or on the technology? Well, I, I did have another question. But, go ahead. But now, and, and you're following the same guidelines for for our area of right, ridership. So, so actually, it's a geofence. So yes, every, every market where we go in, uh, the city gave us uh, the geofence of where the, where is uh, the riding uh, zone? So in this case, uh, is uh, uh, this part of town and, uh, and uh, the downtown area only. So if you check and download our app, you will see that there is like, a, if, you, if you are outside uh, uh, Waterloo, you see like a, a red area. So that's a no riding area. When you zoom in, you will see just a green area. That's the, uh, where you can ride uh, the scooters. And, and what if business? they go outside of that area? Correct. So if they go outside that area uh, before the border between the green and the red uh, and the red, uh, the, the, your phone will emit a sound. So you will have to stop, uh, of course, your scooter, check what's going on. Usually a pop up message come outside uh, and uh, it tells you the, the scooter starts slowing down and it tells you to go back to the, the, to, to the riding area. So it, it doesn't allow you to go outside the, 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 um, the deployment zone. And who who was as a contact person would be this Tim Pratt that when we're having a special event like this weekend, Absolutely, yes. like like Irish Fest, the scooters aren't allowed in Irish Fest. Or, he's already or aware. Area. He's already aware, and so that's been uh, programmed in to your yes. scooters. Yes, he's already in uh, on top of it. Uh, he knows all the events, of course, being uh, a native from uh, from this city. So he's aware about all the events, uh, and he's uh, the the right point of contact for uh, checking uh, with the the operation team. Uh, every measure that have to be taken, like when they, they, the scooter um, can't be available, of course, because there are certain events uh, uh, that doesn't allow scooters at all, or where to put the scooter in the right areas for helping people to come and, uh, and, and to go and come back to the events uh, in, in question. Okay, thank you. And that applies no if there, for example, Lincoln Park. If one of your scooters goes in Lincoln Park, which is a, a prohibited area, they get it will a happen phone call? the same things that I was expressing a few minutes ago. It's like a no riding zone. So the scooter will emit a sound. You will receive uh, on your phone uh, a message or a beep or sound. Uh, at that point, you will have to stop the ride, and, and the application will tell you through uh, a pop up message that you have to take back the scooter in, uh, in the allowed areas where you can ride the scooter. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Just a couple. Yes. Sorry, Thank you. So, how many drivers are you trying to hire then? Is Mr. How many Park? drivers? Yeah. So and what are, what, what's their job? Sure. So, we will have a city manager, of course, that mm-hmm. is handling uh, all uh, the back end, so all the part of the tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we will have all the analytics uh, that uh, follow all the operation. Uh, rather than that, we will have uh, up to two mechanics, so okay. people that will work on uh, helping on fixing uh, any kind of problem that uh, will arise and uh, four driver. Then it depends also on the number of scooter, if uh, uh, as probably the, the regulation we passed today is if under 50, instead of four, we will have three. Okay. Uh, but up to, we, we would like to arrive to up to six. That's what we wrote in, uh, in the application. 
uh, and in growing with the market. So it's uh, exponentially the number of scooters, the, the work that has to be done, the shift also, because uh, if it's uh, a 24-7 operation, it's a different thing that just, uh, um, just uh, new uh, midnight to, sorry, uh, from, uh, from 4 a.m. Yeah. to 11, yeah. fr fr um, to midnight. But uh, ba basically, is uh, we are flexible on everything. Also on the hiring process, it's pretty. Okay. But we are still hiring. So we hired actually a few weeks ago uh, some uh, brand ambassador. So there are four people, young people, that will go around the city with uh, our scooter, uh, following the rules, of course, and they will uh, and they will prevent any problem. Because I heard in the last uh, meeting uh, that there were some concern of uh, double riding, uh, sidewalk uh, riding. So these people is basically around the city to help uh, to understand the, the, the regulation and do the right things, like following the stoplights uh, uh, and like, checking uh, everything uh, on, on the website if it's necessary, helping uh, in case uh, someone is not able or doesn't know how to download our app, that is pretty easy, but who knows? And uh, even uh, the process to have access uh, to, to the scooter. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Mrs. Klein. No, that was all answered. Good. Terrific. Any other questions? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey. Madam Chair. Yeah, question I got is that um, the Hellbiz uh, scooters, uh, when I was in Waterloo uh, prior to this meeting, uh, the uh, I had noticed many of them just left wherever. Um, how is that going to be cleaned up? Go ahead. Hello? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, th I think that uh, we uh, we are addressing uh, this uh, problem. Actually, going around and being here, it's uh, 48 hours now. I, I kind of see our scooter placed and parked in, in, a, in a correct way. Also, uh, following some rider last night, I saw that they parked the scooter close to other scooter. But anyway, we, we will work with the city on creating this sort of uh, hotspot area, parking uh, corrals or how we want to call them. And uh, we can even implement on our app uh, those uh, parking uh, uh, areas to make sure that uh, every ride will start and end in those specific uh, And what spots. if they don't? If, if they, they don't, actually, you can't close the ride. So if uh, we specify on the, on the, on the app uh, that uh, there is a specific uh, uh, parking area, uh, like at the corner of uh, Chu Street, uh, you have to stop the ride in that, uh, in that uh, corral or parking area. If not, you can't close the ride. So you will have to, it will, again, pop up a message telling you that you can't close the ride uh, wherever you are. You have to go to the, the, to the nearest uh, parking. But if they break the rule, drop the scooter off someplace that's not authorized, first of all, how do you retrieve that scooter? I know of somebody that said that a scooter is in their backyard, um, which is way outside of the zone. Can you track down that scooter? So, and sorry. what happens to the rider who broke that rule? So can they you, ride again the next day? Well, uh, we arrived to that. Uh, the, 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 uh, to, to your first question, we have uh, uh, a system, a backend analytics, uh, that uh, shows uh, the, live, uh, uh, the live rides. So we know exactly where they start, where they go, where they stop the ride. Uh, so that can help also to implement this parking, uh, this parking hotspot we were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, at the same time, uh, we know uh, if uh, who is the rider and where, where he stopped the ride. If it's outside or in the backyard of someone, uh, we have our rebalancing team. Uh, immediately, we know where the, 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 the scooter is left, and we can contact our city manager and deploy someone to fix the problem in, uh, as, in as less time as possible. And if that doesn't happen, they can contact your... Absolutely. Okay. So one th another thing that I heard in the past meeting is that uh, uh, there were no uh, contact information. Actually, if you check on every scooter, there is a sticker. On the sticker, there are all the, the contact information, email address, and uh, phone number. That's directed, uh, uh, directly uh, connected to our customer service. So there are different, uh, different ways to contact our customer service. It's just calling. 
uh, and waiting uh, online, or there is uh, a service on the app where you can speak uh, in a live chat uh, with someone and address uh, what's the issue. If uh, there is a, a scooter in a, in, a backyard, uh, in a backyard, we can uh, understand exactly with the, the number of the scooter uh, and uh, where the scooter is uh, and address the problem right away with our operation. Yes. Uh, Ninety-nine uh, percent of the time, uh, we monitor everything, so we can uh, we can help. If uh, there is uh, someone that sees something that is not uh, correct, uh, apart of course contacting our customer service, you can uh, check the number of uh, the scooter. Each scooter has uh, a number and a QR code. So, if there is a specific uh, scooter in the backyard of someone, as uh, your example, uh, we can address it right away and find uh, the scooter. Uh, uh, in a few minutes, basically. There is a GPS, so it's uh, easy to, right. to, to find uh, the scooter. Yes, yes Mr. Amos. So correct me if I'm wrong. What I heard you say is, is, let's say like someone did take a scooter and park it in a backyard. They, uh, unless they take it back to the designated area, they will continue to be charged until they take it back to the proper area. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, actually, uh, yes in the sense that uh, he will receive uh, a, a message telling him you can't stop your ride. So if you just, just to throw the scooter on the grass and go to the neighbor to drink a coffee or whatever, yes, the ride keep, uh, keep going on. Okay. So that's for preventing uh, this, because right. uh, if you pay, at that, uh, at that point you keep paying. If mm -hmm. uh, you want to stop the, your ride and going somewhere else or just walk, you have to close the ride uh, in, a de in the designated parking. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Madam, yes, Mr. Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Mr. Morrissey. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, I'd like to ask a few questions here again. Uh, how many scooter locations are there in Waterloo? So as of today, I think that uh, uh, there are some, but the idea is that to arrive to 400, I guess, if uh, you know. I, I missed So we, we didn't, we, we, I'm sorry. How many locations? So I, I know that uh, uh, after the first meeting, uh, some areas, <coughs> parking areas will be designated uh, and is up to 400 spot, if I'm not wrong. 400 Yes, locations? or 300 location. I, do you know, Kill? Okay. But as, as of right now, we deployed uh, in, uh, in like following uh, the, the, the right of the way and uh, the rules of the city. So as today we are speaking, uh, we didn't implement that uh, already, but it can be done uh, pretty easily when uh, we know and we mapped the city together. Jessica, did you find so out the number? It's 400? Mr. Morrissey, did you hear that answer? No, I did not, Sharon. What? Okay. Jessica said there's 224 locations right now, and they're trying to get more. Does that answer your question, Mr. Morrissey? Do we have a bad connection? Sounds like it. Mr. Morrissey, are you still there? No. I have a question. As long okay. As waiting, Let's know. go ahead, and then we'll go to Mr. Well, 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 okay. No, it doesn't make any sense. If they're allowed 150 electric scooters, excuse me? We're yes, you're I'm cutting out here. on us, Pat. Madam Chair. Yeah, you're, you're, you're cutting out. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair. Um, 224 locations for 150 scooters. Hello? Yeah. Hey, uh, Madam Chair, can you hear me okay or not? I can right now, but you okay. are cutting out. But... But that's 224 options that they have of places that they can can park a car, park a, a scooter. Yeah. But that's not us. No, 
there's 300 scooters. Oh, so my. Yeah, and there are now so 300 scooters or potentially up to 300 scooters. Which we're going to cut back to 150 we, if we approve the changes, correct? No, it's 150 per organization, and we're limiting it to two organizations. That's what I mean, but Hellbiz would be allowed no more than 150. Right. That's correct. Like, right. uh, if the ordinance passed today, we would have 150 scooters. So, okay, so uh, my question, second question is, uh, looking at the presentation, uh, there are 10 cities in the U.S. that has scooters. And I see Waterloo with 150, but then Miami with 150. And I dare say that Waterloo is a little smaller than Miami. Well, that's, uh, uh, and then Arlington. Well, let me finish, please. I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. then Arlington. Sorry. Arlington, Virginia is there, 250, uh, and Sacramento, 250, uh, Alexandria, Virginia, 200. So my question is, uh, it seems like Waterloo is the smallest. So how do you determine the number of scooters for a given city, given that the uh, Waterloo is the smallest city, but... It has the same amount of Pat, Pat, we're having trouble hearing you, but I think we understand your question. And I will throw the question to you. Yep, we we can't right. hear you, Pat. Okay, go ahead. The other Chuck. cities. Okay, so uh, it depends from market to market. Like uh, Miami, it, it doesn't Am reflect... I do I keep cutting out all the time, Sharon? Yes. <laughs> what did he say? Does he keep cutting out? Yes. Yes, yes you keep cutting out. I'm going to let the gentleman from Helmets answer your question. So let's let him answer your question, okay? Go ahead. Hello. Okay. So, okay. okay. So it depends from uh, market to market. Like, for example, he was uh, pointing uh, to Miami. Miami, uh, the city decided when they started the pilot to start each company to 50 scooter. And then uh, on, uh, on a three-month base uh, and performance per scooter, uh, you could uh, uh, put more scooter on, on the street. So we started in a late, uh, in a late moment. We started in uh, uh, November 2019. So uh, then uh, COVID kicked in. So we were not allowed uh, from a county uh, decision to put uh, scooters on the ground. So we couldn't even implement. When we restarted the operation in uh, uh, September, October uh, 2020, uh, basically uh, the, that was the number we had on the, on the ground. So uh, it's a decision of the city, of course. Uh, if a city uh, wants uh, just to start uh, with the two companies and 50 scooter, that's how we do. Uh, if not, uh, we 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 um, kind of suggest how many scooter. So again, uh, here in Waterloo, uh, I, I I read the the ordinance was uh, up to 250 per company. So that's why I applied for 250. No problem on putting down the number. Other cities, uh, for example, Arlington or Alexandria, I don't remember which one he was pointing uh, to. Uh, but again, decided to start with a lower number, and then uh, in the next uh, year uh, we could uh, uh, update, uh, upgrade, sorry, the number of the scooters. So now Arlington is, uh, for example, at 300, up to 300, uh, even if we started with 150. So again, every city can be different, uh, uh, can be different, and yeah, I, I hope uh, I answer the question. Thank you. 
Yes, Mr. Bilson. Quick question, sir. If you have a chronic abuser of your scooters, let's say they've been they've been stopped a couple of times for riding on, on the sidewalk, and I'll give you an example. We left the council meeting two weeks ago, driving up Fifth Street, and there's a half a dozen of them riding up and down the sidewalks at maximum speed. And uh, so if you have a chronic abuser, can that person be banned from, from your app? So yes, we have a, we have a three step uh, before arriving to the, the complete Le ban. Uh, in certain markets, for example, after the second time you, you have been stopped, you can, uh, you can fine the person up to $250. Uh, so it's kind of prevent uh, the, the abuse uh, the, that you were mentioning to. So, so, so you find them, sir? Helbis finds them the 250 So actually we event. find, but it's something that uh, it's a kind of given to the city. To, uh, personally, it never happened to us uh, because we, didn't, we never arrived to the point to find the person. Immediately when, uh, when there is uh, the first uh, uh, unlawful uh, drive on a sidewalk and uh, the person can be found, uh, we immediately send an email or, uh, or we call uh, the, the, the rider telling him uh, to follow the rules. Uh, to be completely honest, in all the markets, it never happened that we arrived to the second step. Uh, of course, the third step uh, after the fine is arriving uh, to banning uh, the person from, uh, from our app. And it never happened again. So they, they can't just create a different profile? Well, uh, actually, no, because then you have to put your ID. So the ID, the, the scan, scan of your ID basically reflect the name and the credential you included in the profile. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much for no your No problem. Thank you for having me here. Welcome to Waterloo. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I apologize for our city manager that uh, is not feeling well. He wanted to be here to present himself. But, uh, well, have I'm, him come to our next meeting and just introduce absolutely. himself. He's always available. So anytime, if you want to meet him or you meet him uh, on the street, uh, you want to, to stop him and ask questions, uh, we would be more than happy to answer to everything. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, okay, let's go back to the changes that Marty is recommending. Um, does anyone have any questions on those amendments? Okay. Anybody have any general Madam questions? Chair. Yes, Mr. Morrissey? I, I don't think we're, we don't have a good connection. I don't know. Can you hear me? No. No, we cannot. You are cutting out on us. I don't, Chris, is there anything you can do or not? Is it on internet or? Nothing. Oh, okay. Can he call in? Can you? Could you call in, Pat? Well. <laughs> I will be here uh, for a couple of days. So if any one of you want to meet me in person and having more information or whatever, I'm more than happy to, to meet you in person and speak uh, on everything you want. Okay, thank you. No Appreciate that. Pat, you might want to try to call in because we're not able to hear you right now at all. Okay. Um, let's go to Jenna. <laughs> Karen. Pat, <laughs> what? Uh, I need to get the call in number. I need to. Okay, get the Chris call is going to call you. Chris is going to call you right now with the number. Okay. Chris is going to call you with the number. Okay, I'll, I'll hang up. Thank you, Pat. Um. Pardon? Okay. Jessica, did you have a presentation or? No, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on the number of scooters because um, it was said uh, potentially 400 scooter deployments. And that's so there can be options for people. Um, so we have 224 approved right now. There's going to be right now with the ordinance, if it passes, there would be 300 scooters. So we will make sure we have that 300 scooters. And then we're looking to get more locations just to help both companies be able to have options as to where to put those scooters. It's not allowing them more scooters in town until you guys pass that. It's just having that option. And it's 150 each company, correct? Yeah, that's why we're making sure we have at least the 300. We're just waiting on some information back from the city department or permission from a business or private property owner. Okay. 
I just wanted to clarify that quick. And, and um, Jessica brought up some questions and concerns to me. We had a nice long talk. One of the biggest problems that i am become aware of is the enforcement. And I'm sorry we don't have anyone here from the police department. Um, our own city clerk has seen violations. Um, a lot of the people are writing on the sidewalk. Uh, a lot of them are writing through Lincoln Park. A variety. And the problem is everybody's calling Jessica, or a lot of them are calling Jess. And that's not, she can't do anything to implement. Who should be getting the phone calls? Should it go to, Ke I think it should go to Kelly, but she might not agree. <laughs> or maybe Second. it should go to Ray, since if you I were can, the first to laugh. <laughs> if you give That's me fun. a gun and a badge, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but my understanding is it's supposed to go to the police department, but I have heard scuttlebutt, some of it in second and third hand, that the individual police uh, officers don't feel that they have to enforce this. So what do we do? We need to talk to the police chief and get the truth of it. Pardon? You could ask him at, when, when someone's here yeah, for the yeah. regular meeting. And that's what I was hoping. But yeah. it should, any violation that somebody sees should go to the non-emergency number at the police department, correct? Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, yeah, I would say that um, we can get that confirmation from the police chief when he's here at the meeting tonight. Okay. But generally, you know, it's not an emergent type situation. It's more or less just a, um, a situation where some intervention and education would probably be um, best. Yeah. So having that non-emergency contact would most likely be the case. But again, the police chief can kind of we'll clarify ask that him when tonight. He's here tonight. Correct. Um, secondly, our ordinance it says that everybody has to be 18. If somebody goes out and buys their own scooter, and they come riding downtown on the sidewalk, do we issue them a citation? Or our rules only apply to the two companies that we have agreements with. Martin Peterson from the legal department. Um, we actually have an ordinance that says there can be no motorized vehicles on our sidewalks. There's also, um, in the business district downtown, you, it's um, unlawful to ride a bicycle on the sidewalks, and it's also that would apply also then to the scooters, whether they are leased or owned. And that would also prohibit the places like Lincoln Park from them riding in the in the park as well. Yes. So people that own their own scooter have to follow the same rules as those that lease them from the two companies, Ex except for the age? Yeah. Okay, so, no, go ahead, come on up. Can My somebody understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, up? Madam Clerk, but um, if somebody owns their own scooter, they have to be at least age 16 pursuant to our ordinances. Yeah, I think the bicycle ordinance that covers scooters is 15. Is 15? Yep. Okay, so if you own your own scooter, you still have to follow the rules, but you can be as young as 15. For the two companies, you have to be 18. Correct? Yep, that's correct. Okay. I got a quick Jessica, question. Jessica, you're so stuff. impacted. Madam because, Chair. Does that answer all of Looking your back. questions? Just a moment, Mr. Morrissey. Jessica, Main Street, Waterloo. Um, I would add that the both companies have been fantastic about working with us over the past couple of weeks, trying to update some of those areas. Um, I think we finally got the kinks worked out on Lincoln Park. Um, so hopefully we won't be seeing any more scooters going through Lincoln Park, but they've been great on following up immediately as soon as we see an area that has, was supposed to be a no-ride zone that we're having some issues with. Great. And we're, we'll try to make sure you don't get all the complaint calls. Well, and we'll part of it's education of the community. So, you know, some of the complaint calls we, we've gotten recently have been, there's a scooter clear over here, but that was within the um, geofenced area. It is part of the ride zone. People just didn't understand that. So education is going to be key in a lot of this. Well, and then also, if you get the calls, I want to make sure you have, you have the numbers mm -hmm. where you can refer those complaints. Definitely. 
Any other? Yeah, Mr. Bosen. Well, since we have a representative from the other, other scooter. Yes. I was curious on if you could if you could address the council for just a second. If 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 your company is going to the going to the verification of the ID. Yeah. Yep. Um, seeing that that's an ordinance, Craig Bennett, um, plea manager with Bird. Um, seeing that that is an ordinance, as uh, something we'll make adjustments to our app to have the physical ID scan to make sure we cut out um, underage riding as well. And can a person rent more than one scooter? Yeah, so via our app, you can. Uh, one person can rent multiple scooters. Um, if we do keep that feature, we will make an ID scan required for each and every scooter that that one phone is scanning um, to kind of help all those scooters, they'll, they'll need their own individual ID scan to um, ride, but they will still potentially be able to use the group ride, but not without IDs for each scooter. So there will be verification, so you won't see like a mom and dad and two small kids riding around. No, no, unless the two kids have a valid ID. Then and they're 18. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Morrissey? Yeah, Mr. Morrissey, do you have a question? Yes, 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 I do, Sharon. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Okay, so the question I have is I, I looked at the operational map, um, and I noticed uh, something that seems rather inequitable, and that is that the geographical area in which they operate is weighted heavily to the south side of the river. And so my question is, why is that geofencing or whatever you call it not extended at least up to like Sullivan Park and down um, like Independence Avenue, giving the north side of the river uh, a better area to operate those in, making it a little bit more equitable compared to the south side uh, uh, geographical coverage? I think it should be changed, in other words, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, who set up the area? Kelly, do you know? Kind of a, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're trying to find out who set it up to start with and why. Just a second. The, there was a team that was initially put together to research the scooter companies and Bird did say we're the original company that was here proposed the geofenced area. We did try to narrow it down and make it smaller for the initial launch, helping to grow. And um, based off of narrowing it down, the conversations amongst that team is who selected the geofenced area that we started with. Um, but there's definitely room to grow. We wanted to see where the usage would be and where the scooters would be needed before we made too many more changes to the area. Could you hear that, Mr. Morrissey? Well, I could hear that, but that still doesn't uh, satisfy me. I, I want that area on the north side of the river expanded to at least go down Independence Avenue over to, uh, say, uh, let's see, I'm trying to read this here, say over to Ray Supermarket uh, and extending uh, northwest uh, over to... Uh, Say Conger Street, because um, that that gives more area in there. Because there are businesses in those areas, uh, and one of the reasons why we had this set up was so that people could get to and from their businesses using these scooters. So I'd like to see that map get extended, covering those areas. From what I understood from Jessica, it sounds like this is going to be an ongoing process. Um, to look at expanding to growing, um, I would I would defer to Kelly and Martin. Um, I assume that would come back to City Council for final approval on any expansion, but it can definitely be proposed and changed. Um, and watching where the scooters are getting used, okay. based off the data from both companies. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the neat thing about just getting this program started now is as we get some uh, data about ridership and where people are picking up and dropping off rides. Um, from both the companies, we can look at expanding, 
We can look at potentially adding more scooters. So I think this is something that we're going to grow into. Um, I think it's good to start out small to begin with so we can get a lot of the kinks worked out. And then um, but we can definitely look at adding those areas, Mr. Morrissey. Well, I, I again, I just want to reiterate that I believe that the map should have been extended to begin with. And we don't know for sure what's going to happen with two companies here with maybe a total of, you know, 300 scooters, up to 300 scooters, uh, and how that's going to work. So it may, rather than expand, it may contract. So why don't we have it expanded now and then see how that operates? And then if it needs to be contracted, we can contract it. That's another way of looking at it is what I'm saying, Madam Chair. I understand your observations, and I'm sure we'll all take that into consideration and pass our thoughts on to Kelly or Mr. Peterson. And if we agree with, with you, we will pass that along, okay? Okay. Okay, so that's just a suggestion for an added amendment proposal, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, so, yeah. Any other, did you have any other questions, Mr. Morrissey? Uh, no, not right now. No. Okay. Any other questions from council? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned. Okay. Meet back finance at 510.